Welcome to our webinar together with an ocean. And today we want to talk about uh, the solutions for smart commercial buildings. Uh, we want to introduce at first ourselves. Uh, Simon, would you start, please? Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry, I can't show my video screen for some reason, but I'd just like to introduce myself as Simon Johnson, and I'm the UK sales manager for an ocean. Yeah, hi again. My name is Michael Tunte. I'm the key account manager in the export from El Taco, and I'm working for El Taco around about 26 years. And uh, yeah, our, we will go through now to our webinar and start with the first slide from an ocean. Thanks, Michael. I'd like to think that most people who are, are listening have heard of an ocean, but for any of you who haven't, this is just a little bit of an overview of who we are and what we do. So, an ocean. we are the, the original pioneers of energy harvesting. We develop wireless and battery-free sensors and switches. We've been established nearly 20 years with offices in Munich, and we manufacture in, in Europe in two sites, uh, one in Germany, one in Hungary. Our USP is that we harvest the energy for our devices from movement, light, or temperature differential. We are radio agnostic. We manufacture our devices in multiple frequencies and different radio standards, 868, 902, 928, uh, Zigbee and Bluetooth. And our devices are used all around the world in thousands of buildings for commercial building automation, smart home, lighting control, asset tracking, assisted living, hundreds of others. And obviously with uh, the coronavirus now, we're getting heavily involved in people monitoring and room occupancy. Our technology is used by around 350 partners, one of whom is obviously El Taco. Uh, a lot of those partners form the N Ocean Alliance, and the Alliance are there to promote the N Ocean radio standards around the world. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Yeah, El Taco. What is El Taco? El Taco is not a Spanish company and uh, we are not producing any food. So the name El Taco is coming from uh, an abbreviation and uh, the German word for it is elektrischer Tastkontakt. And uh, the two first uh, letters are sitting together the name El Taco and it's a uh, yeah, description of a normal impulse switch. And this is uh, produced or developed since uh, two, uh, sorry, 1949. Yeah, El Taco is now around about 71, 72 years in September, and it was founded in 1949 by the father of uh, the found of um, Ulrich Tiger. Ziegler, the uh, general manager nowadays, and um, also Ulrich is holding the share capital nowadays. But of course, the next generation is also on board. We are still a family company uh, with nowadays around about 180 employees. In 2019, our turnover was around about 55 million euro. And our distribution center, you can see it here right in the bottom, is uh, located near Fellbach. It's uh, in the south of Germany, near Stuttgart. There is also our central stock and our management. Um, we have a production for our uh, electronic devices and the completely wireless range in China since many, many years under our own control. This is very important, I think, and it's located in Shenzhen. We show you in this presentation the possibilities how you can use, for example, the central installation, and in some cases as well, our diesel in, uh, decentral installation. So both possibilities you will see in the next presentation in the next slides. What can we do with a wireless system in a wireless building? So a wireless building uh, could be realized with a worldwide standard and ocean radio technology. Here in Europe, we are talking about 868 megahertz. Uh, as 
Simon um, told you at the beginning, there are also different uh, frequencies for other areas around the world. So if you decided for a wireless solution, we do not need any wires to control the devices. A lot of sensors, for example, do not have any batteries. And Simon will describe you later how we will, uh, or an ocean at least, will create the energy to send a signal. Of course, with a uh, wireless technology, we will offer you a lot of comfort and of course, a lot of safety because you can have it also as an encrypted version. Software and app control is of course, yeah, we don't have to talk about it, it's normal. Each um, solution, smart home solution, is possible to control over software and app. And of course, over voice control um, like Siri or Alexa or Google Home, uh, we also can control our devices. Since 2008, El Taco has a cooperation uh, with an ocean. And uh, so it's a successful business since more than uh, 12 years. And we from El Taco can say that we are having the biggest range of products uh, with the El, uh, an ocean ship inside. Our first poll, what we want uh, to know from you is, what kind of commercial building are you mostly focusing on? Can you please vote? So we're interested in finding out what you would be installing the El Taco devices, uh, what projects you'd be, you'd be using the El Taco devices on, be it warehouses, offices, retail, hotels, restaurants, or hospitals. Just to give us an idea of what background uh, the system integrators who are listening are from. So we've got so far 50% offices, Michael, 67% now offices, 75%, 80%. 21% yeah. voted, so it's offices certainly appear to be one of the strongest sectors with then hotels, restaurants, hospitality. Yeah, we see in which direction um, is it going. So this is uh, perfect because uh, exactly this is um, a part of our presentation here. So offices, hotels, um, we will see it later and uh, there you can see some possibilities what we can realize so that's 68 percent voted and we've got 61 percent offices 26 hotels and then four for each of the others warehouses retail and hospitals so certainly offices michael and the hospitality industry yeah perfect i can see the vote as well now so um as i said it's exactly what we are talking about later in our uh, presentation here so we can go ahead, I think. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, we will start with our hero. As you can see here, this hero can make each home smart. In this sample, you can see a uh, UK castle, a typical UK castle, and of course, we also can make it smart. <clears throat> but today we want to talk over a little bit more modern buildings, like an office in this sample. Uh, as you can see here, it's an open office and um, there are, for example, installed um, PIR sensors, motion detectors, to detect uh, occupancy, how many people are at the moment in the office. So this is an option what we can do with these uh, motion detectors and we also can switch on and off, for example, automatically the lights. Uh, we can measure the brightness and everything is included in one case, Simon. Can you describe? Yeah, I can. Thank you, Michael. So inside the FBH PIR sensor from El Taco, we have our SCM300 module. I wonder if you could click the screen, Michael. I, I don't think I can move it forward. It's one of our solar powered modules. You can see it there on the left hand side. And in this case, it's taking um, the ambient light from the artificial light in the, the office to power it. I know the El Taco device does have a battery on board and we do allow the ability to add a backup battery 
to the majority of the devices should it be in a, a dark room or an area where there's insufficient light to charge it. The SCM300 is designed to be extremely energy efficient and in you know, ideal circumstances where you've got sufficient lux levels, these sensors will run purely on solar energy. The people quite often ask is, how do we manage to have devices that run on solar but will work in the middle of the night when there is no light? So we have two very clever techniques to allow these devices to work through the night when it's dark. We have very clever energy monitor electronics and we have short-term and long-term storage. So initially, as soon as you take the device out of the box, it starts to charge straight into the short-term storage. Normally takes a couple of minutes and you need around about 400 lux of light. This gives you instantaneous use. After two minutes of the device being out of the box, it will start sending a signal. Any excess energy after that then starts to flow into the long-term storage, and this allows the device to operate continuously. And in some cases, depending on the transmission rate of the radio, we can have devices that will sit in the dark and work perfectly for up to 10 days. Thanks, Michael. Okay, Simon, I go ahead. Um, of course, these um, sensors need on the other side some actuators. Uh, we show you here a series uh, 14. We are talking about a Dean Ray solution. And the heart of a Dean Ray solution is a uh, receiver and transmitter. We call it FAM14. And in this FAM14, there is also inside an, an ocean ship uh, and the other devices, for example, a universal dimmer or a uh, switching actuator, an impulse switch or a shading actuator, they are not having a uh, chip inside. The uh, devices are connected over a bus to the FAM14, and the FAM14 gave the signal, the ocean telegrams, to these actuators. And you can increase it. Uh, there is no limit to install um, the actuators. No numbers are limited here. If you want to uh, use more than 255 uh, actuators, you can open the next line and that's all. Yeah, you see here some more devices uh, in the office. There is also an air quality VOC sensor plus temperature plus humidity. This sensor can be um, measuring the quality of the air in an office so that it's possible to control the air conditioning or to switch on and off in a van or to open windows, whatever. So this sensor can be installed as well in an office. Uh, on the desk, everybody can have a table base with an, an ocean push button inside to control separately the lights for the, for the uh, tables. And at least there is an option to have an iPad in a docking station to control the completely office uh, over this iBezel. It's a product from iRoom and together with El Taco as well. Yeah, from the office, we will change into a meeting room. Um, we have a meeting today, and as you can see, um, there are a lot of chairs, and under the chairs, we can install uh, a new sensor from an ocean, and uh, the sensor is a uh, multifunction sensor, what Simon will describe now in detail. Thanks, Michael. Uh, yes, yeah, so the El Taco FMMS uses our new STM550 multi sensor. We call it the Swiss knife of sensors. You can see from the picture, it's actually the same frame format as our push button module. So it will fit in any El Taco System 55 frame, or you can also buy the version on the right there that's in a little compact frame for mounting on windows or on furniture. It will monitor the room's environment. It reads temperature, humidity, and lux levels. So it can be used for HVAC applications or for lighting control. It can detect acceleration, stroke vibration for window and door glass break monitoring, and it also includes a traditional magnetic read contact for 
again, monitoring windows and doors for HVAC overrides or security. It'll operate totally battery free. It'll only require around about 200 lux of light for about six hours a day to stay fully charged. But again, for rooms where there isn't sufficient light or it's mounted in a really dark area, which in this case, if it's mounted under the chairs, it would be dark. You can add an additional battery with an additional battery, it will last for up to four and a half years. El Taco are using it in this scenario for vibration. If someone sits on the chair, the chair obviously moves and you can detect that someone is in that chair. And this has been looked at widely for, again, the, the COVID scenario where people want to know how many people are in a certain room. The parameters also of this device can now be adjusted with our new NFC tool app which allows you to set the sensitivity, the transmission rate, you can name the device, you can select the profile it uses, so temperature, humidity, vibration, or the magnetic contact, and you can also adjust the security settings. And this new app will be available to adjust the settings on other NOcean modules going forward. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, coming back to the meeting room here, uh, of course, of course, we also measure here over our um, PIR sensor. Uh, are there people in the room switching on and off the lights automatically? Um, so we are detecting uh, the brightness. There are a lot of possibilities. And as uh, Simon said, over the multi-function uh, sensor from an ocean, uh, we exactly know how many people are in the meeting room so that we can prepare, for example, a dinner for you. So no problem. We know how many people are in the meeting room and we bring you what you want. So of course, we also can measure here the air quality with our sensor for VOC, temperature and humidity to control automatically the air conditioning, what you can see here in the top of the ceiling. Over the automatically clock, um, there is an option to create uh, scenes, for example, to switch on and off a meeting room. So to heat up a meeting room, there are many options uh, what you can realize with this clock. Of course, is this clock sending as well uh, an ocean wireless telegram? Um, and installed is here the same uh, devices. We start with an heart of the net, the FAM14 receiver and transmitter. That means it's bi-directional and as a sample, uh, same samples as in an office, we are talking about an universal dimmer, an impulse switch, or also a shading actuator, what you can use, for example, for the screen for, for the beamer. In the middle of the table here in the meeting room, you see an eye top. And this iTop is also possible to uh, put in your iPad um, so that you can control over the screen from, from the iPad uh, all functionalities was what implemented in the room. You will see if you want uh, how many people are sitting on a chair. Of course, you can count them as well because you are in the same room. Um, and uh, every time the iPad is uh, charged and you can use it also for other applications. You can have it in different colors as well. So I show you black and white here, but there are also other colors like uh, bronze or gold or silver as well in our range. From the meeting room, we are going out for a dinner. We are now sitting in, in a restaurant, and in this restaurant, uh, we are talking about, of course, uh, motion detection, occupancy, so that the lights are going on and off automatically. We are dimming up and down. And what we also can create here is over an FRGB white dimmer. Uh, this is a dimmer for uh, color stripes. Uh, automatically, for example, different kind of colorful scenes. Uh, as you can see here, now the color will change. Uh, everybody knows it nowadays, um, these kind of stripes. They are so easy, so simple. Uh, lots of people are using it uh, as well at home to create um, some comfortable scenes. 
And on the window, once again here, uh, Simon can talk a little bit uh, more about possibilities of the multifunction sensor. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, so in this scenario, we've got the multi-sensor mounted, <coughs> excuse me, on the window. It could be used, either used with the magnetic contact to detect whether the window was open or closed to set back the heating or turn off the air conditioning, or it could also be used with the vibration sensor to detect if someone had smashed one of the windows. So the, the multifunction sensor, I mean, the name says it all. It has so many functions on it and they can be all used together or used independently depending on what features you want to, to pick out of it. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, I also think it's a perfect device. Uh, there are so many different uh, possibilities. So um, we will see where it's used in the future. In a hotel, back in the hotel now, um, we are sitting in the lobby. In the lobby, uh, there is once again, of course, uh, a motion detector and PIR sensor, what uh, also is counting the occupancy so that the hotel now, for example, how many people are in the lobby and they uh, know exactly the number of people. Um, in a hotel or in a lobby, there is, for example, a different kind of um, possibility con to control our devices. The same devices, but now we want to control them over a gateway. So we are offering a lot of different kind of gateways, starting with a gateway what uh, is possible to use for RS232 or over USB. And uh, over this gateways are a lot of different systems connected to the El Taco actuators. For example, Lutron, Crestron, or own created uh, softwares are controlling our actuators because the an ocean uh, philosophy is uh, that the system is open and we from El Taco also open um, to other systems. They are allowed to control our devices. They get from us the, the perfect uh, EEPs to control our actuators and um, they are only writing their own software and it's done very, very often. In the next slide, you see a gateway for DALI. Also, it's an option to control with an ocean push button, an ocean sensors, and so on. Um, DALI um, ballast gears, for example. And this gateway, it's yeah, a translator from an ocean to DALI telegram. And also the other way, from DALI into an, an ocean telegram. So also this gateway is of course bidirectional. The next gateway is for our power line devices. We from El Taco also having um, power line actuators, what's possible to control over the 230 volt net. There is also an own telegram and this gateway translate from an ocean to this power line telegram and back from power line into an ocean. So we also can use uh, the 230 volt net over a long distance to control some actuators. At least there is uh, another gateway in our range. Lots of our visitors and guests today, I'm 100% sure working with uh, KNX devices. But when there is uh, an KNX existing installation and you have to increase it, it's not so easy. You need a cable. But with this gateway, you can increase it very easy. You only have to connect it, the two wires to these red and green terminals. And um, then you have the option to send an, an ocean push button into a KNX system. And also you can send out from KNX and Ocean telegrams to um, control, for example, uh, wireless actuators from El Taco. This is absolutely interesting. You see there are so many different uh, possibilities when we are uh, talking about the series uh, 14. 
the Series 14 is very, very flexible. And um, if you want to have some more information, don't um, hesitate to contact us. Yeah, now it's time to go to bed. We are in a hotel room. In a hotel room, at first, of course, you have to put in your hotel card. This is a hotel card reader, battery less. Put in your standard hotel card and all the actuators can understand this wireless telegram. This card reader is also battery less. So you put in your card, the card reader sends a telegram. The actuator in this case is an FUD61. There is, of course, also the an ocean technology implemented. What Simon can describe now. Thanks, Michael. So inside the uh, El Taco FUD61 dimmer and uh, the DIN rail mounted version is our TCM300. We have a large range of energy harvesting devices, but ultimately we need a power receiver at the other end, picking up the signals from our battery free switches and sensors and controlling something. So the TCM is one of our line powered modules and it's used by El Taco to add the radio functionality to the FUD dimmer. In fact, it's used in the majority of El Taco's actuators, be it switching, dimming, or blind controllers, they use a TCM300. They're not as exciting as our kinetic modules, but they are the fundamental building blocks in a El Taco smart home or smart building, smart office. They offer out of the box some fundamental features that you need to operate the devices. So they've got unidirectional or bidirectional communication built in. So they'll send information and receive information, which is essential for dimming or DALI. They have a single channel relay mode for a single channel switching actuator. And they also have a four channel mode for four channel switching actuator or for blind controls. Now, El Taco do have a four channel switching actuator. It uses the same TCM300 and they use it in their blind controls. In this case with the FUD, El Taco are using the single channel dimming mode, which is also already on board the TCM. So it's a, a very clever little chip. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Yeah, back um, in our bedroom in the hotel, on the, on the left and the right side of the bed, we are having the push buttons to switch on and off the lights. And uh, in the middle of uh, the bed, there is a yeah, scene push button. So you also have here some or a lot of different options. Uh, and all of these push buttons are completely battery less. And once again, Simon, can you describe your fantastic technology here? I can. Thanks, Michael. So inside the El Taco push button is our long-standing PTM module. It's nearly 20 years old, patented. It's what started an ocean. It comprises of about eight components with the main two, if you move to the next slide, Michael, being the Eco 200 and the PTM circuit board. So the Eco 200 is in effect our little kinetic power station. It uses very similar technology to a bicycle dynamo shown here on the, the bottom right for anyone who doesn't know what a dynamo is. A dynamo uses a rotary motion. Our PTM uses a rocking motion. When the push button's triggered, a small metal plate that's wrapped with fine copper cable rocks between two opposed magnets. You can see in the diagram at the top. This movement, which is around about two millimeters, generates the power required to send the radio signal. Tiny amount of power, but it's enough. At the same time that that energy is created, one of the four contact points on the PTM there is triggered, sending the radio signal from the switch to another El Taco device, a switching actuator, dimming actuator, whatever it may be. Because of the clever layout of the PTM, it generates energy when the energy bores are pressed, either the top energy bore or the bottom, and it also produces energy when they're released. And because of this function, we can in effect turn a one gang switch into a two gang switch and a two gang switch into a four. And also because of this press and release function, we can use the PTM for dimming and blind control because it knows the difference between the press signal 
and the release signal. So that time delay allows it to be used for controlling dimmers or blinds. And then in larger installations, which would probably be in an office environment, instead of each individual trigger just switching on an individual circuit that can be used to trigger scenes. So you could have three scenes and a central off from one two gun push button. Thank you, Michael. Okay, go ahead. Back in the uh, bedroom of a hotel, um, in the ceiling, we also, of course, um, have installed a smoke detector. So if there is any fire in the room, you will get a noise, of course, and uh, this smoke detector is sending an, an ocean telegram as well. So the actuator, what is um, controlled the light, can be received a telegram from a smoke detector and is switching on directly the lights. So if there is smoke in your room, uh, you not will hear only a noise, you also will wake up because the lights are dimming up. On the left side, you see here a window door contact. It's um, also a mechanical version. And inside, it's the same technology what Simon described. So this device is also battery-less. And we can use this mechanical window door contact with the battery-less battery less uh, and ocean technology to switch on and off, for example, automatically the lights in the bathroom over the slide door, what you can see here on the left side. And at least more and more it's used in a hotel, also some, some pads. In this case, we are having here an iPad and the iPad is uh, in a wall docking uh, station and it's permanent charged. Uh, it's possible to control the lights in the room, but of course, um, nowadays, perhaps also to order your breakfast in the morning or whatever else. There are a lot of options because it's a standard iPad what is used here in different colors, of course, are available. Yeah, the next morning we want to go to a shopping mall together with your wife. And you know what happens when you are arriving in a shopping mall? Darling, do you know where the toilet is? Yes, of course, honey. It's on the left side here. And we are going into the toilet. What are, what functionality can we found in a toilet? Of course, our standard PIR uh, sensor, the motion detector, what's detecting people what's coming into the toilet to dim up automatically the lights from 50% up to 100%. And what we also can measure in a toilet, uh, in a bathroom is how often are the toilets used over, for example, the same window door contact, what we have seen in the bathroom. This is a mechanical version with a better really less an ocean technology inside. Or there is another option, uh, a different kind of window door contact powered over solar cell and uh, with a battery, what Simon will describe for you. Thanks, Michael. So yeah, the FTKB from El Taco uses our long-standing STM329 module. It's been in our portfolio for a long time. Very compact with its little coiled pig's tail antenna keeps it very short, which is ideal for mounting on door and window frames. They seem to be getting slimmer and slimmer now, so we need to keep our devices as small as possible. I know that El Taco also manufacture this device in anthracite, which is becoming a really popular color choice for windows. So this works again, totally battery free. In this case, in a dark toilet, it, and El Taco do install a battery because we just don't have enough lux level. But again, if it was in a a bright room, it would work totally maintenance free, which is ideal for door and window installations where the routing of cables for powered devices is often really difficult, overlooked, or quite often in the wrong place. And to keep the energy usage at an absolute minimum with the STM, it obviously reads the open and close signal straight away. But then if it's just sat idle, it will only send a sign of life signal once every 20 to 30 minutes. 
so it will sit maintenance free for a long time just doing its job thank you michael yeah so we are finished in the bathroom and coming back to the shopping mall yeah of course now we have to visiting the first shop together with our wife so here's the custom entrance the custom entrance in our first shop and in this shop we um, also see once again of course our pir sensor to to measure the occupancy how many people are at the moment in the shop um, so this could be interesting to to control uh, we are measuring the brightness we can make daylight control with these brightness so there are a lot of options and in each shop is for example installed once again the fam 14 plus in this case a dimmer to make this uh, daylight controlling and uh, yeah he is once again installed of course inside the an ocean technology simon simon your part I think I'm right in saying that in this scenario, the TCM is actually in the FAM receiver module. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, this device is installed at least in the FAM, uh, but of course the FAM is bi-directional and the information is coming over the bus. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so in the case of the DIN rail mounted devices from El Taco, the, our TCM module is installed in the FAM radio module. That then links to any other El Taco DIN rail mounted device, uh, be it a dimmer, a blind controller, a, a heating controller, and they're linked together with little connectors that create a bus network. So the intelligence of the El uh, the an ocean receiver is only in the, the master, let's say, and then all the other devices connect to that as slaves. And the advantage is that if you've got a switching actuator and the customer then wants you to change it to dimming, you can simply pull out the switch and actuator, swap it for a dimmer, a little bit of recommissioning, and you've then changed the circuit completely to dimming. So it's a, it's a very flexible system. Yeah, absolutely you, correct. And absolutely correct, Simon. And uh, each FAM can receive 126 um, uh, channels or can control 126 channels and can send out also 126 informations i'm on i'm off i'm in that position and so on so there are a lot of options um because of this by direction by directional uh, possibility yeah back in the shop uh, we have done our first shopping and um, yeah as you can see here more and more important is in these kind of malls to control the the energy to to measure the energy of the shops so you have one big energy meter, uh, what is installed from the company, what's um, delivering the current. But of course, all the um, shop um, have to pay separately for the current. And for these, we can offer you a three-phase energy meter with, in this case, up to 80 amp uh, direct measuring. But we're also offering in the same size an energy meter what you can use for the transformers for example five up to 500 amps so there is no limit to measure also higher currents and if needed in small smaller shops for example there we can install a single phase energy meter and all these energy meters can send out typical and ocean telegrams where is everything included, momentary power consumption, uh, the kilowatt hours, what is um, counted until now, and we can store it, for example, on a server. Yeah, this was our small tour through an office, a meeting room. We were in a restaurant. Um, back in the hotel, in a lobby, sitting at the bar, having a drink, uh, creating some, some night and day scenes and so on. Uh, and at least we were out for shopping. Please let us know now, what do you think is more expensive? A wired or wireless solution? Can you please... So we're interested. 
We're interested in knowing if you think that uh, wireless is automatically less expensive because of the lack of wires and additional labour costs that are incurred with wiring. So there we're, we're, we've only had a small amount of the vote, but everyone's 100% wireless so far, Michael. 100% wireless, okay. Um, yeah. But I can see only 6% uh, voted until now. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, we'll leave it a little bit longer. Yeah, here coming now the votes. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Uh, it's changing. It's quite even, actually, between all three mm -hmm. answers. Yeah. Nearly 60% of the vote. We will show the vote when. Yep. 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 So, wired is forty-five percent, wireless thirty, and about the same. Yeah, I think. I think the reason is that uh, they are voting for for the wired solution is because um, yeah, the the cost of the people, uh, the mounting costs are perhaps uh, so expensive nowadays. Uh, and that's the reason why a wireless solution uh, could be, should be um, cheaper and at least more flexible than a wired solution. Latest, yeah. when you have to uh, increase the installation, then a wireless installation is uh, much, much more um, flexible and cheaper than a wired installation. But interesting yeah. to yeah. see that our guests are having the same um, idea as we yeah it, it's quite often um sold a wireless solution on cost saving and we we uh, us El, an ocean and i think el taco are the same we're trying to to move a little bit away from that cost issue um sometimes it can be less cost and sometimes it can be the same and sometimes it can be a little bit more but the advantage you've got once you've installed an el taco wireless solution is that it's as we've got on the screen in front of us, it's very flexible. That's not the case with a wide solution. Once you put a wide solution in, it's fixed. Yeah, absolutely correct, Simon. So I, I agree with you. So a wireless installation is so flexible. I have it here at home. If I want to um, increase it or want to change some functionalities, it's so simple and so easy. And especially if we are talking our about offices or if we are talking about hotels and also shopping malls there are often uh, changing the, the, the functionalities and you can do it in an easy way with a wireless installation absolutely oh. okay um at least we want to ask you can you ask us what we what we are missing in this presentation or we will answer all the questions from you. We try to do it now, uh, but if we don't have the time or we're running out of time, uh, we will answer all the questions by emails later. So we've got some already coming in, Michael. Um, is the DALI gateway DALI addressable or DALI broadcast? Um, is it broadcast? Yeah, we can control with the broadcast and the uh, 16 DALI groups. So uh, this is possible with our gateway. So we cannot um, control each address separately, but uh, the groups we can control and broadcast, of course, as well. Yeah, um, and also we have got, uh, how do you measure, visualize the amount of people in an area? Um, I think that was probably, um, not correct we can't actually count the amount of individual people michael can we we can yeah. just detect that there is people yeah sorry yeah. that was not not um, at the moment yeah. not at the moment but no. uh, i'm 100 percent sure uh it, it should be possible in the future yeah yeah um do you have backnet integration solution yes we do we do yeah Rick you Al. can find it in the notion alliance yeah yeah, um, in a hotel room, I could not see thermostat. Is it not needed there? Yeah, for sure we would need a, uh, a thermostat in the 
the hotel room. I don't think the eye room includes a thermostat, does it, Michael? No, no, no. There is no therm thermostat inside. So if you also want to control uh, over the same system uh, the heating, then of course you also need a temperature regulator. Yeah, we, we show some samples, um, but if you have any special projects directly, please contact us and we will uh, help you to find uh, the right devices to complete it. I've got an interesting one there from Phil is asking, does the Dali Gateway support emergency testing and results? So of the emergency lighting, Michael? Mm -hmm. Can we, can we, does it support the emergency lighting testing? Um, the Dali Gateway. Over the Dali Gateway, uh, no, I don't yeah. think so, no. No. Uh, no. Is that something maybe in the new DALI devices? But, but we, uh, this is in the DALI devices, uh, it's included, but not over, uh, over the gateway. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I'll send you an email, Phil. We do. Yeah, uh, I think there are so, yeah, I think there are so many special um, questions. Uh, also, how can I program the actuators? Um, this was an, an webinar uh, to show you the possibilities. We are offering also special webinars how you um, have to create, for example, um, to connect a push button to an actuator and so on. These are more technical webinars in our range as well. Yeah, and also another one is, are the KNX gateways available with the ETS files? Mm -hmm. Which we can answer. The, we'll the, gateway, get back to... the gateway is uh, implemented uh, in the ETS, so you can uh, program it over the ETS, yes. Yeah, it comes with its own ETS file. I'm sure I've used one before and it's, it comes with its own ETS yeah. or VD files. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, any other I questions have, we I haven't have answered? I had a training before. last December on it, so uh, I'm. I'm sure, and I have seen, and I worked with it. It's implemented in the ETS. Yeah. 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 Um, I think that's it. What software do you? Oh, what software do you provide to see all the devices by the iPad? So, how do we add the El Taco devices or see them on the the iPad? Yeah, there Michael, are. Uh, yeah, there are different uh, possibilities. Uh, it's depending on what kind of, uh, for what kind of server do you decide it? And uh, in the future, there is uh, the option to do everything without any server. So um, it's depending, uh, there are, what server yeah. is installed and then we are using different uh, apps. But the apps are every time for free. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. We will, um, for all the questions, because we're running over a little bit. Yeah. For all the questions that we haven't answered, we will answer them via email. So don't, yeah, don't exactly. panic there if are, you haven't replied. There are coming we, a lot we of, will get back of to questions. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a lot of questions. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you, audience, for attending, and and thank you, Michael, for supporting us with this um, El Taco and Ocean webinar. Yeah, thanks for all our guests. Uh, it was nice to have you here. And uh, once again, on our last slide, you will see our contact details from Simon and uh, me, uh, also our email addresses. Uh, you can contact us uh, directly over email, of course. And if you are um, knowing our uh, phone number, you will find it on our website, for example. Please call us as well or send an email. We will answer. And all the uh, questions what we did not answer uh, you will get automatically an answer by email. Of at least um, an Ocean and El Taco using a lot of social media sites. Uh, we are on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Sing, and LinkedIn. Um, so you can decide it by yourself uh, from where do you want to get uh, the information. Uh, you are every time up to date when you are uh, in one of these uh, social media accounts. So you see, uh, we both of us are a modern company and hopefully we will see you in one of our next webinars. Thank you very much and see you next time.